So in Two Tickets to Paradise, George Clooney says to his uh, ex-wife, uh, you know what was wrong with our relationship? We had everything except the right place. And she says, what do you mean? And he says, well, the house, it's great. It looks great here at this location, but the location isn't near any of the things we want. Um, and she's like, okay, I um." So you want to go to a different location and build a different house? And he's like, no, I got these guys. They can move our house across the country and locate it over in this great spot. And then she she and they both say the same, you know, location at the same time, you know, uh, Vancouver Islands. And, and then he's like, remember, we went on vacation there. So then she's like, this is a really serious endeavor. Um, are, you, are we really sure we want to go through all of this? And he says, yeah, but also, um, I know this guy, and he's on the committee for uh, choosing, you know, whatever we call it, fanciest house of the year or whatever. And uh, there's way too many houses. I've been trying to compete to get this house into perfect condition and over here on the east coast and there's just way too many competitors in this category but there's no competitors in this in this uh two-story cottage category back on the west coast because nobody built them like that over there it's an it's an open you know sweep so then you know she keeps thinking about it and looking at the magazine you know as he's you know talking about how they can be grand and glorious and have everybody over to their house and all this crap so, you know, she, of course, agrees. And then, uh, whoosh, you know, you have the scenes with all the um, house stuff getting moved with the guys who are going to move it over and set it at the other location. The, the plot's all the same, but uh, I just thought it, you know, needed to be upgraded. So people are always talking about moving their houses across countries. So <laughs> why not? So, um, they take two tickets, you know, on the airplane as they're, like, watching on a tablet as their house is being shipped across the country on, like, you know, whatever huge semi on the freeway. And they're all gloating about how cool they're going to be. Then, you know, the pilot comes out and, um, it's like this, you gotta have, like, this, I don't know whatever mixture whatever short woman like black cuban mexican pacific i don't even care a million other things uh or none of them just the point is she's like extra like you know um short and wide in the good way and then like you know the pilot comes out, the assistant pilot, and it's her ex, you know, fiance that wanted to, you know, ask her to marry him in the first movie. And he's all like, no, it turns out, you know, why it wasn't working out between us is a, you know, you just weren't my type. And she's like, oh, is this your type? And he's like, yeah, she made me realize I was gay. And now our relationship is so much better. So then, you know, and then she's got like, you know, all like short dykey hair, you know, even though she doesn't isn't a lesbian, but, you know, it's like a joke, you know? I mean, I don't care if she's a lesbian or not. <laughs> then, you know, Clooney and, uh, whatever hell her name is, uh, I can't think of it right now, uh, they all just, like, look at each other, and they just keep looking at each other, and then they just, you know, say, you should get back to, uh, you know flying the plane we wouldn't want to have another accident like last time and then they uh and that's the end of the scene i guess i don't know so then their pregnant daughter shows up with her husband for vacation you know at their new house location and um she uh is so disgusted at her annoying parents being so immature like she had to raise them that she hatches a plan that she'll um she says to them you know why don't you instead of you know, fighting with this, um, Asian dude across the harbor, uh, why don't you instead, you know, befriend him, because these teenagers here are really, you know, partying all over and being annoying, and, you know, maybe you can deal with it if you're, you know, friends instead of enemies, or at least frenemies, so then, um, 
she says she'll introduce him to the Asian uh, dude who lives in the house across the bay. And then, uh, you know, he's all like, oh, man, because, you know, your uh, your lovely uh, daughter and um, husband were so gracious, I'll totally be um, allies with you. But then secretly, she and her husband, uh, they want to, you know, get revenge for her never having an awesome teenage party. So then even though she's, like, pregnant... Then she, like, you know, she's the one that gets the teenagers to go nuts and, like, invade the houses. And she disables the security code herself. She gets the code, you know, out of a security room all sneaky, like, with her uh, uh, distract distractions and uh, bait and switch, you know. And then uh, the door is ajar and her husband slips in, you know, as uh, the other guy leaves because she says that, you know... Uh, she thinks, uh, her water broke or something and she's just messing around cause she's not even ready to give birth yet. So then he's all like, oh, I'm a, I'm a skilled, uh, doula or whatever. And then she's all like, oh man, whatever. So then like, she's pretending she's having a few contractions on his weird shaped couch that like cranks up at different angles for no reason. Cause it's all artistic. Then, you know, meanwhile, her husband steals the uh, codes that, you know, change every 36 hours or whatever, stupid. And uh, then the teenagers are in and they have the ultimate party. And then they're all, you know, smashing through everything and having sex everywhere while she's like, you know, getting high on mushrooms. Because technically that's good for a, a baby. And, uh, you know, encouraging them, I guess. I want to prove that, like, everybody who's in a movie... Just because for a scene they have to make out or something. Like you saw how with um, in Ticket to Paradise, when I had them make out for the scene, they just took a take where, you know, they like pull away and they're like, oh man, that was, you know, not very fun. And just keep it in. Because... That's better acting. So, like, on the other hand, pretending and not revealing that, you know, you don't really care for each other in that way, just for the sake of the plot as characters. So I was thinking for this Two Tickets to Paradise is Ryan Reynolds' character, you know, um, the friend of um, the daughter character who shows up with her, you know... Because now her friend's pregnant, you know, so they got to Not the mojito drinking friend, whatever, the daughter character's pregnant, obviously. So then um, her friend's helping her with that, and she's visiting her parents who are going nuts again on the, you know, West Coast this time. And then she meets Ryan Reynolds, and they're scheming to, you know, fuck with uh, her friend's parents again. So then... They fall madly in love as she says that, you know, he's worked too many, you know, jobs that have made him blue, you know, he's got the blues and, uh, he just needs to, you know, learn how to loosen up and party and he acts like it's super deep and meaningful. And, uh, I don't know. As they, probably this is a good opportunity for as they act sneaky and like they're messing with their lives of these other older people, that like, that's like what's turning them on and making their relationship get hotter, you know, like stupidly, just as a joke, because it's retarded and I don't take that seriously at all. Yeah, it's perfect. Tickets to Paradise 1 was Ammon's movie. I don't even know what the fuck is wrong with me, but... Here goes, I guess. Uh, Ticket to Paradise 2, because it's like they've learned a tiny bit because they're slightly better people from emotionally torturing themselves at such an old crotchety age that it has to stick with them because yeah. it's too painful not to. They go back and they're rebuilding their house, but then it's constantly symbolic of how, because he wants to do pieces of it, he wants to keep putting in beams and making decisions himself. And they say, well, you know, like, because there's not, there's like a shortage of labor, we just say supposedly in the area. The people that are helping him 
are like traditional like you know Mexicans that have moved from like sort of South America area but they're very traditionally Mexican because they live all over so they're like um, you know if you're gonna put in the B if we're gonna put in modifications to the house then our tradition is that you have to help us put them in yeah you know what I mean so that like it's like saying you're investing your strength in the house so then he takes it hyper seriously because, you know, <laughs> she knew he would because it's all about his manliness. Then he pulls his back. Then he goes to the doctor and realizes his kidneys aren't flowing and they're in terrible pain because they're, you know, twisted and they, they're atrophied from consuming, you know, their type of diet. You know, too much sodium, uh, too much coffee, you know, these different things. And he's like, recommends green tea instead, the doctor. And he's like, what are you, some sort of hippy dippy you know like moron and he's all like green tea is pretty strong i don't know what do you want like black tea like earl gray because he's like no that's not the point you're taking away my options and then he's uh, the doctor just says no i'm really not you took away your own options a long time ago you know what i mean yeah like uh yeah i'm just informing you of, of what you know your body's doing so, um what do you have any more ideas? Because I got one. Well, I was going to continue. Yeah, go ahead. You can't hold on to the idea. No, I go right. ahead. Okay, well, the concept of what I was going to say is, so he deals with that and starts taking some pills, you know, like Barlow herbs or something from online, you know. Yeah. Hint, hint. Anyways. Um, and he's like, oh, man, you know, like he then tries to like, because they say like a good fireplace, like he agrees is the heart of a home. But he keeps trying to make modifications because he can't decide what looks good, what rocks on the outside of the, like, the fireplace, or if he wants rocks. So he keeps changing it, you know. And he keeps pulling his uh, tendons and his arms into his heart until <sighs> it's like he realizes his heart is misaligned, you know, like like the the house itself like you know like yeah. why he can't fix the fireplace like it's symbolic of his own you know self you know perpetuating scenario like how you were talking i was just making a joke as ammon was saying and the worst people secretly they were all just you know the relationship failed because they couldn't build a decent home or something stupid <clears throat> but what i'm exploring is yeah so if they got back together they go back to doing the same stupid fucking thing so, I'm just saying, what if we explored that, and that's what they're doing, and it's like, for her part of things, um, I don't really have an idea here. I do. But, like, all I was gonna say was, like, um, it seems to me, <clears throat> people say, oh no, they're hopping off the boat at the end of the first movie. So nobody really thought there was going to be a sequel. So they only spend an, like another week there. Predictably. Because, predictably, because they're right, they're flighty. Then they go back to, you know, fixing up their dream home. So my only thought was, the reason why there's no workers, except for some dudes that are, you know, real traditional, is because all the workers are busy building... A different mansion for a sexier couple, you know, for across the lake or whatever, who could be played by I don't know Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie or something. No, let's go younger. Yeah, because they're, they're, yeah, they're younger. Bad people. Yeah, That's the point of the movie. Yes, <laughs> we know this. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, we need younger so, people. Yeah, so that's the I would theme. Have it be yeah. Like, uh, jeez, like Sloane Morgan Seagull. Yeah. Because he's young. Everybody claims he's super young, even though he's like... Oh, yeah, he's and he young. likes being in romantic comedies. Yeah, he already said that. And, like, who's a young... Uh, there's so few people that they've gotten that are young. They're even born in the 90s. Um, I don't know. More Emma Watson. I don't know. Yeah, just put Emma Watson in there. Even though she looks older than Sloane Morgan, but Sloane Morgan is burning his face off with greasy fast food, so now he looks old, too. Ha uh, ha! Yeah. Way too much Mexican food that's like high in sodium. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's better to bring in like people that aren't as known. Yeah, not like I mean, or upcoming. Yeah, whatever you call it. Yeah, so I'd prefer somebody else, but I can't find any woman that's like Emma Watson's like like at least eighty nine. I don't actually think she's born in like nineteen ninety. Yeah. Yep, she's older than me. 
Dude, everybody kept acting back in the late 90s when I talked to them. They'd be like, because they'd all be born in like 88 or 89, everybody. And they're like, you're born in 1990? Nobody's born in 1990. Yeah, I don't I don't know why that is. But people sure lie about it and pretend they're born then. But I know they're lying by the way they're behaving. Okay, oh. here's the point though. Um, <laughs> George Clooney? What I just said there, that's what... Um, Sloan Morgan Siegel should say, you know, to his wife, supposedly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, George Clooney, okay, Sloan Morgan Siegel is supposedly a big Star Wars fan in the movie. Right? Yeah. Because they go over to their house, they're so jealous, and she's like, oh my god, I can't believe it. You know what I mean? And it's like, the point is that the Mexicans, like, just fucking with their heads because they keep saying, like, because it's just their tradition, they just say, if you can't build a house that, that matches your ability to build it, then it's like, your heart has not, you know, expanded to grow, to, to be your home. Your heart is not your own, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, he's fucking, he's fucking going nuts, George Clooney, you know, because their house is perfect, and it's just going in just the way they planned it, and he's, like, got, like, Asian brain damage, and he's got it all going in just the way he wants across the lake, you know what I mean? Sloan Morgan, the seagull. So, like, he's, you know, his online handle is the seagull, for, you know. Yeah. So then, uh, they, he gives him one of those dueling lightsabers. Yeah. You know, because he's all, like, super upset because he keeps saying things like, you know, like, yeah, you know, we're just so fortunate in life, you know. I'm, like, uh, half Hawaiian myself, you know, like Keanu Reeves, you know, just, like, different things regardless. I don't care. I just, it's just funny because he could be, you know, he looks yeah. like sort of. So then he's, like, you know, I'm, like, half Alaskan and half, half Hawaiian, you know, like, my two homelands are really, you know, special to me, and they mean a whole lot, and I have, like, traditional stuff that I have plenty yeah. of you know, pots and urns. And I feel like, you know, when they <laughs> give, are going to give me the award for, uh, you know, the, the best home this year, I already, they already said, based on my designs, because we, yeah. we, did, we did CGI renders of the whole house, that, that I'm already pre-selected to win. <laughs> yes. So then, yeah, Clooney gets angry because the Mexicans so are going. It's like a nerdy yeah. Star Wars battle. Yeah. Right? They're like battling overly dramatically. Yes. You know, as he's all like, you know, that's pretty good because he's like, all of us, he's like knocking him aside because there's yeah. a big heavy dueling one. Yeah. That's great, you know, just and to see how good they are at Star Wars battling. Yeah, so then, you know, they have an elaborate fight where he keeps knocking yeah. his lightsaber aside and, like, supposedly, like, pushing out of it. Like, like, over the fire cool. pit where they're, like, barbecuing so it's all dramatic, sparks up into their faces, yes, sort of. while his wife and both of their wives are sitting there and, like, but for yeah. different reasons. She's like, he's such a nerd. And then she's all, like, thinks he's embarrassing her because he's being competitive with lightsabers because he really just wants to smack him somewhere. But he can't. He's so slow as a joke is he keeps blocking yeah. every direction. <laughs> Well, yeah, that would be pretty much accurate. Um, all I was going to say was, I was thinking um, <laughs> their workers, uh, because they, you know, it's the facts of the future. Everybody isn't enslaved to working way too hard for no reason, getting things done for idiot assholes. So the, their workers suddenly announce that they're, like, going off to, like, some stupid random holiday from South America or something. And they'll be back in, like, a couple weeks. So then he's like, no, because, like, um, he's going to, like, not have his house done in time for um, the competition of who fanciest house of the year. Even though, because there's a category for small and quaint or something, you know what yeah. I mean? Because it's like, you know more supposed money put into a house. Yeah. That's, but not as much because it's small, you know what I mean? So, like, the category is more taste. So then he thinks he can win even though she's like, yeah, but you keep breaking yourself every five seconds and never getting this house done. Yeah, well, my joke was then uh, they get everything done, but then they say, okay, uh, we can't get this done because it'll take a couple of days to set up. In the basement... One of the main pillars of the house is like cracked. So, like, a new pillar has to be put in on beside it. And then the old one has to be knocked down and the other one has to be set just right. So then he says he can do it himself, you know. He, he totally, you know. <laughs> so then, you know, there's the whole dramatic music, you know, and like the slow motion as he smashes the old pillar out of the way and the other one settles into place, you know. 
But you gotta have the super. Okay, let me set the mood. Yeah. You gotta have like the the super bright, like you know, like work lights set up everywhere that are like, yeah. you know what I mean? So it's like for slow motion, like how they do that for slow motion videos, you know, where it's all bright on, you know, like yeah, uh huh. So it's like side lit as he's like doing it, you know, and he all swings the hammer up, you know, so it's all like, like you know, the sledgehammer as he takes it with both hands. Well, I can't really light myself at the same time, but uh, let me. Uh, whatever. Position that. Whatever. Close enough. And then he goes, you know, like, up, and then he's like, you know, like... But the joke here is, you cover everything in that stunt dust that they always do, like that chalk powder. So it's like the hammer coming up from the floor has powder coming off of it. It's so overly powdered for no reason, because it's comedic, as it, like, whooshes dust through the air. Then on the... It cuts to, like, the backstroke in slow motion, right? Because he yeah. does that and then does a stroke down, you know, at, at the pillar, right? Yeah. It's got more dust coming off of it, as if it's a dust trail either direction, illogically, like, perfect quick cut. Yeah. And then he, he slams it, and then the pillar is, like, coated in dust and slight amounts of, like, some sort of, like, glue or something that keeps it hanging a little bit on it. So, like, a poof off of it overly dramatically as he, like, slams it. So there's, like, a ridiculous amount of dust flying every direction in slow motion, all powdering up into the air. Yeah. Well, like, it's, so, like, they're competing for the overall grand prize, supposedly, for the House Fancy Magazine, or whatever you're gonna call it. So then, um, like, they're, like, they both get caught, like, trying to sneak onto each other's house projects, and, like, even though they're, like, sleeping in trailers next to the houses, and, and, like, whatever, and, like, try to, like, you know... Do stupid things to sabotage so that, you know, judges will notice different things. Like, just like, you know, like, for example, like a timed mini explosive from Bluetooth that'll, like, blow up the gutter and make it swing down when the judges are walking past. And, like, you know, like, slam into someone, hopefully. Like... <laughs> Are you yes. Sure this is the direction we're going. Well, what do you mean? They're the worst the characters ever. I am okay. confused. That... So then, um, you know, he says, you know, that's not very cool, you know, and you know, then uh, he has to be meditating on top of his house. Sloan Morgan. Sloan Morgan Siegel in the middle of the night. So he sees him trying to bring in the ladder and do it. So he sees the whole time, like, from above as he's meditating in the full moon, you know. And this, with his shirt off with, like, you know, birds on his shoulders. Yes, with seagulls all over. He's, like, feeding, like, you know, whole wheat croutons, too, I guess. Yes. So then he's all, like, just shaking his head. He's just like, oh, you are so inept. So then the whole movie... Uh, Clooney thinks he's competing with them, but then he's just, you know, the wise Asian dude who's just, you know, trying to get him to realize more lessons, just like the Asian dude who's the seaweed man who married his daughter. So the point here is, um, after he smashes the pillar and does all that work, he realizes he's got old man strength, you know, and he's like, because he gets, like, more muscular through the course of the movie anyways, a little bit. So then he all, like, challenges him to a re-duel, because he lost the first time. So then, like, the house fancy people show up, and they, like, don't realize they're showing up, you know, yet, and they're, like, you know, dueling all over the place, like, all over the top of, you know his super awesome mansion, you know, and, like, jumping off onto the pagoda roof and, like, rolling down and, like, sword fighting all over. And then finally, you know, Clooney wears him out with sheer old man strength and he falls back and he keeps hammering him with the lightsaber until it falls out of his hands and then he rises up, you know, all furious, you know, to strike him across the face and then he looks up and there's, like, the super dorky, fa fancy, you know, house judge people there, so all standing there. <laughs> and then they all clap politely, you know, like it's a, a cheesy Star Wars performance, you yes, know. Because exactly. they don't realize that they're just, you know, angry at each other, supposedly. Exactly. Yes. Man, um... I mean, we can have some sexy shots of, you know, Seagull going past and, like, different fancy jet skis. Like, every time he goes past their house, he needs to be going past in a different contrivance. 
yes. on the water. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, in the air, in a helicopter, then, like, a parasailing, and then, like, just, um, you know, super jet ski boat. Then he comes past in a motorcycle past their house on the road. Like, he's always passing, you know, constantly, you know, he irritating them. on one of those one wheels you balance on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. While having, like, while having a, uh, a, you know, a selfie stick like this, you know. Like, yeah. with, like, a DJI on the end of it, like, talking to himself while yeah. going past, you know, balancing on it, you know, like, um... Yeah, because he's, like, you know, a house guru expert, supposedly, in the upcoming, you know, fancy rich market, and his own house is going to be so cool, and then it's going to be shown off in the magazine, you know, and then he's going to go on to design other people's houses. Yeah. Because he's a supposed architect. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, I always, you know, I'm just thinking if Caboose wants to, uh, you know, to come up with a stupid house design for the Seagull house, you know, come up with some really, you know, overly grandiose, like, Asian bullshit that's like, you know, all, you know, like you can meditate on the roof, you know, like it's a little moss garden up there, you know. All I gotta say is, Clooney. Yeah. Pay me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this is the real deal right here. We came up with this whole movie right on the spot, kind of like with uh, Pirates. That's how you know it's good. Okay, so here we are in Washington. Yeah. And there's these uh, little islands up here above the top of uh, Washington State. Like, I guess it's still Washington. Yeah, it is, I guess. So, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, see, there's Canada, United yeah. States. We zoom in. There's these different islands. We zoom in some more to Shaw Island here, Shaw Island Preserve. Here's the Maryland Fred Ellis Preserve, Natural Preserve of whatever. This. So, here would be the bay that you would use for the movie, you know, where you're building the houses. You build, like, one house over here and another house over here, like, you know... See yeah. where these pines are thin right here because they're not doing very well anyway. So you clear just those pines and then like... And that's perfect because then he can sneak across the water in a wetsuit to sabotage the other house, you know? Yeah, exactly, over here. Yeah, with like a canoe, you and know, there's or already whatever. boats here. Look at that. Yep. A boat dock. Yeah. Or at least it's just the boats from the movie because everything's back to front. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of boats here. George Clooney is saying you. Yeah. Are you on that boat? Yeah, it's a pretty nice spot, though. Yeah. So Ryan Reynolds, I decided he should be in the movie because he likes hanging out in the redwoods. Likes hanging out in the redwoods. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, he uh, would be in the movie, and he's the guy who taught Sloan Morgan the seagull how to uh, supposedly lightsaber fight. Yeah. You know? So he's there, like, being like, yeah, good, while they're, like, lightsaber fighting each other and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, he, like as if he doesn't get that they're trying to beat each other to death, you know what I mean? Like, at least George Clooney, while Sloan Morgan Seagull doesn't even get it, because it's, like, the joke is he's old. Yeah, yeah. Because he keeps blocking everything and is, like, jumping around all over <clears> the place, and he's like, yeah, this is good, this is it's pretty cool. So, uh, but he's also, which is the joke here, Sloan Morgan Seagull's like sex therapist like he like he gives him advice on how to you know have better sex and stuff then he constantly harasses george clooney away from his house you know sloan morgan's by acting like as if you got way too much tension like the reason you pulled your back is because you weren't embracing your sexuality like all this stupid yeah shit. And then george clooney's like no no stay away like every time you know like that's what Siegel's saying? No, that's what uh, oh. Siegel's sex, sex therapist is saying, which is played by Ryan Reynolds. Like, he's being annoying. Like, he was always like... Oh, yes, and he me? says... Breathe in, relax your prostate, relax yes. your prostate. I know you're, you're your advanced stage, you gotta relax your prostate. He's like, get away from me! Yeah, and then, like, the, he says that, you know, dueling with lightsabers is kind of like return, it's, it's returning you to the caveman experience, where bashing each other with sticks is the only way to get over arguments. Yes. <laughs> That's good stuff. So, Jim Carrey is in the movie, if he wants the role. Yeah. As a 
nearby crab fishermen. Because <laughs> he already played one in a series of unfortunate events. Unless he hasn't done that yet. It was everything suddenly... You know, Whatever. So. Anyways, and he's like re retardedly crab fisherman beyond belief, you know, like, you know, like, hey, the sea claims all. And they're like, you know, like, when the storms blew in, they stole my wife and daughter out, out into the ocean. And they never returned. And then everybody's like, but this is like an inland bay in like an inland bay and an inland <sighs> bay is the joke because that's what yeah. it is and what they're, they're <laughs> at. It's sheltered, and then, yeah. And then he's all like, don't question me. The ocean is never questioned. No matter where you are, no matter where you think you should be, the ocean could sweep yonder. And then, you know, somebody walks up and he's all like, him? No, he's just a terrible swimmer. No. no he's, just, he's just an awful swimmer. Yeah. And then the other, he's just he's like, you know, he's just like, you be a liar, I tell you! You know, like. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely, yeah. And then there's gotta be, like, you know, the uh, summer camp for, like, overly horny teenagers. So then, like. <laughs> It's that, you know, it's behind the one place where the house is supposedly being built, the the Seagull house or whatever. So then, like, um, there's always, like, you know, like, horny teenagers trying to, like, climb over his, like, fence that's all fancy looking, but then it's, like, secretly electrified because it's, like, a sexy, non-pointed wrought iron fence, you know? So then it, like, automatically starts shocking after a second, so they start climbing, and then... So then while he's, you know, on top of his house, he, you know, sniggers while horny teenagers fall away from his fence, you know, as they try to get over it to the pool, you know, in his backyard. Because everybody in these movies is an asshole. <laughs> I'd prefer it, personally, if instead of the electric fence... He had, like, an automated, like, connected to a laptop, like I've seen online, like, paintball gun. Yeah. That targets, like, their general sternum and not their face. So, it, like, fires at them when they reach the top of the wall and pelts them with paintballs. Yeah, I mean, he does different things to different groups. Oh, okay. It's an ongoing gag throughout the movie. Then he orders, <clears throat> you know, uh, mentally deranged dogs from the from <laughs> uh, unstable dog area. That are known for, uh, you know... Uh, rapage? Rapage. And then, <laughs> then they, you know, they... You know, yeah, the then, them. yes. Every, every, every couple gets a different fate. Yes. Yeah. I, I like this. This is excellent. <laughs> yeah, see, then it's like, you know, he's aware of his house's surroundings, you know. So then it's like, he, he's so disappointed in George Clooney for being so obvious, you know. Yeah. And the whole time, he's just, you know, taking him under his wing because he's the seagull, baby. The construction crew that, you know, he thought was going to be uh, working to fix his house, then instead is working on across the bay. His sudden rival, you know, um, he realizes, you know, he finds out that uh, the whole electricity setup, you know, has to be re done to, you know, new electricity poles being brought in, you know, to the area or whatever, fancier ones, because the ones that were there were old. So then that one night, you know, there's no security system, no electric fence or anything. So then, you know, he thinks he can sneak in there. But then, you know, he's up on the roof, you know, and he sees all, you know. I don't know, um... You just gotta have shots of, like, the moon, like, glinting off his eyeballs, you know, way too up close, you know? As, like, he's on way too much cocaine, you know? <laughs> on, like, way too many coca leaves, you know? And, like, his veins are all standing out, but he's super calm and, like, standing on one foot, you know, all posed and, like, crane stance. You know? <laughs> With, like, you know, binoculars, like, scanning around like an asshole. Because, like, you know... He's like a pervert, and he's like checking out the, uh, you know, horny, you know, elitist, you know, teenager fuck camp right over the trees, you know? So you're saying he's such a bad character <laughs> that Sloan Morgan's playing, like it's slander, <laughs> that he's actually torturing the couples because they want to bang in his lush bag garden and spying on them. <laughs> 
Damn, he's like the worst. Yeah. He's like a bad Asian businessman. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the point, right? He's got he's got Asian connections and automatically succeeding in life. You know, that's the joke. Oh, it's great. So then he comes so then he's gotta be at the bar. Um, you know, and like, you know, drink some like, you know, actual coca like green that's like, you know, from uh, Peru or Bolivia instead of the stuff that's like simulated gemstone cocaine. Yeah, that I got got, like, the different color dyes because you look up the different FDNC dyes and they're actually things like Jasper and stuff, the same stuff that's put in shaving cream. So like those are so what you can survive heavy gemstone poisoning and heavy like yeah like, or like cactus dye poisoning, but it's not good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and then just because this is a, a lesson everybody needs to need, need needs to learn directly in the movie, so they remember. Then Ryan Reynolds' character just walks up to him and says, You know what, man? You are the problem. And then he says, You see that? You know that city up there? You know, I had to work in that city. You know, I had to slave away. I had to wear 9 to 5 a blue shirt. I was just another blue-collar worker. Just another blue-collar tech worker. You know? Yeah, right? And uh, it's people like you that make me sick drinking, you know... Drinking the very substance that we're enslaved to. And then he goes, no, this is the natural stuff from South America. I don't know, just, just so people remember, you know? Alright, so... The point, the reason why George Clooney's jealous, supposedly, of his neighbor is because he's got cool stuff. Like... You know, from his phone or, you know, screens or whatever, he can control a bunch of drones that are going around and planting infinite, like, exotic herbs and flowers and all different stuff, you know, all around the island area of his house while he, like, sits in his home and, like, in a bathrobe, you know, and, like, taps at the screen all lo uh, loungy liciously or something. So then... You know, um, George Clooney, you know, he's real clever, his character. I don't even remember what his name is. Who gives a crap? I don't remember names. Apparently, um, the other, uh, woman in the movie remembers names, though. But, um, slightly. So then, like... I'll get back to that. So, like, he's got an extensive mushroom garden and, like, moss garden of all different colors and types from around the world that he's forever flourishing and making more ornate, you know. So then the Clooney character keeps getting more jealous. So then he says to the guys that are building his house, you know, they're all like, he's like, come on, guys. Like, we need to, like, really, like, get a bunch of people, you know, to show up and, like, compete with those guys across the bay because we can't let their fancy technology from Asia outdo us, you know? So then he's got, like, a bunch of, like, people who show up for, like, you know, their family reunion, you know? And then they're, like, you know, planting, like, exotic things that they know will grow in the area better, you know, all over around his house so it looks... Super sensual, you know? I don't know. So then, like, um, the, um, hallucinogenic mushrooms that have different weird effects, um, he's got, like, a greenhouse laboratory off of his kitchen with, like, different cutting-edge stuff, you know, from different laboratories around the world. So he can try it out in his food and stuff. But first he's trying out different stuff that he's planning around the landscape on the horny teenagers. And then you see it's for research that he's, you know, spying on them with drones and binoculars to see the effects 
on the horny teenagers, all the different types of mushrooms and stuff that are cutting edge. Yes, research. <laughs> yes. It's totally not just so there's random porno shots of 18-year-olds fucking each other in the moonlight and stuff. <laughs> then there's, like, teenagers, like, going over to their island because he wants to compete and plants exotic stuff of his own over there and, like, has a bunch of mushrooms and stuff that grow up the trees and stuff. So then, like... He's like, oh no, like, there's, like, sexy people all around having sex every direction, like, because it becomes, like, the hot spot in the area, and then we have an excuse to bring in, you know, Taylor Lautner, and then he's coming in with, like, a party boat, and, like, people are, like, coming in and, like, stealing his mushrooms, you know? So then he has to, you know, at the end of the movie, team up with the other uh, Asian guy, and, and, and set up, you know, all the paintball gun automated turrets and stuff because they're stealing all their mushrooms, you know, and they've gone crazy. They got mushroom lust off the ass. Yeah, yeah, all the teenagers are pouring in from all directions, you know, all the elitist pricks, you know, from all the high schools. So they found out about the, uh, you know, sex bay. And that's it, you know, and the next thing you know, there's, like, you know, dolphins there hanging out, like, drinking tequila with teenagers everywhere on boats. It's crazy. And then every time Ryan Reynolds, through the movie, like, acts resentful to rich people and says that he had to be a blue-collar worker forever in that terrible city, um, then, like, every time there's, like, a micro-flashback, like, above his head, like, in the sky... Of like, what, of like a different job he was doing, like Amazon, like warehouse worker where it's all like modern and he's just like watching robot arms like grab stuff off of like shelves as it like goes along a track, you know, and creates orders and then drones like pick up and take off with it and he's got to like, you know, make sure things are working. So then he like gets hit, you know, on the head by, by, like, a drone, you know, and, like, you know, a robot arm, like, spins his shirt and, like, yanks him off his feet. <laughs> Body slams him into a bunch of boxes, comedically, filled with, uh, uh packing pants. Yes, but then, <laughs> uh, flying out of them has got to be a bunch of those, <laughs> those car tire sex toys I use. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so the ones that are, like, bust your dick. It's like... I just have to point this out for a second. I know this is off topic, but mm. I, this is everybody's problem. <laughs> There's a billion polymer mixes. I look for countertops and different things of different flexibilities. I see people pour molds all day long on YouTube for different densities. So why is it that every sex toy is either way too soft and gelatinous and disgusting feeling or rock hard to the point where it beats you to death like it's going to beat Ryan Reynolds to death? Yeah. There's no in between. Yeah. So he has to say that those are the some of the hardest things that have ever pieces of rubber that have ever hit him, you know. Yeah. So one of the flashbacks of course is him, you know, being shot at as the bank security guard <laughs> in the other movie, you know, oh, free yeah, guy. You're right. Yeah. That was my joke, you know. <laughs> That's a good joke, yeah. Yeah. And then at one point he's wearing like one of those blue construction <laughs> worker city hats. But then, like, you think it's just, like, he's, like, going to be overseeing, like a, constru like, a construction manager or something for, like, some project. But then instead it zooms out and he's, like, working as a, like, volunteer for, like, the UN. And it's, like, emergency corona time. And he's all, like, yelling in slow motion and being heroic and feeding, you know, like, starving, like, immigrant children, like, hot soup, you know, as they look up with him and, like... Golden eyes, you know, like all yeah, stupid. Yeah, golden sunlight. Yeah, with sparkles on both their faces. <laughs> with like doves out of nowhere. Yes. <laughs> Just you know, stupid stuff like that. I don't know. Um, I don't know what other blue related work jobs are even available. He's a propane deliverer. Yes. I mean, he delivers propane to different people, of course. But then you know, instead he's just. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it it blows up like it's clean blue gas they use up there, you know, because they're elitists. And then, you know, he's driving away and everything's, like, exploding, you know. 
and he's gonna like jump out of the propane truck that like has a line of propane behind it and then like the whole thing he like rolls out into like the moss on the side of the road and then it like flies off a cliff down onto a beach with people all around like explodes everywhere and like blue flames like rocket up over the cliff edge <laughs> yeah that's what i'm talking about <laughs> he says it was okay it's okay because <laughs> because he was having sex with that client's wife anyway so it's a good thing that everything blew up the yeah. relationship blew up it's a good thing that relationship blew up yes that's great yeah <laughs> I don't know. We just need some action and comic relief in there, you know? It's excellent. Uh, what I was saying, though, was that Taylor Lautner, he's not playing a teenager. He's, like, in his mid-30s. No. Probably secretly, like, 40. But he's <laughs> playing an entrepreneur who's going around and rustling up rich teenagers to, like, have parties in different cool places. So the Bay is supposedly cool. Then, like, he's, like, saving money because he doesn't have to buy mushrooms, which are, you know, wherever. You can just get them anywhere, but they cost a good amount to get a good quality. So then he's, like, just getting them to steal from the people there. Steal their mushrooms is the joke, you know, and whatever else. For his muscles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then he can say the line, Ammon, yeah. that I love. Yeah. You know what they say. I was held back in school my whole life, but my muscles weren't. Yeah. So then he's like got all of the elitist, you know, annoying people and they all like, you know, swarm over his electric fence with like, you know, like rubber, like fishing equipment, you know, yeah. and then like, you know, they're all like, you know, getting into his house and like going to eat all his, you know tasty like herb garden and stuff and go all crazy and have sex all over the place so then like you know they they you know come in with their paintball guns and it's like stupid and there's like all the different um swinging paint cans you know and stuff you can have you know type but like technological version you know so so um There's, like, floodlights, you know, in, like, the kitchen area and all over. So, like, when they're trying to get into, the like, the herb garden area off of the kitchen, then, like, all the floodlights come on with, like, auto swivels, and they've got, like, ability to, like, go into beams. So then they're, like, all blinding everyone as they, like, swivel around different colors and they're, like, hitting them right in the retinas for massive damage, you know? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, you know, um, the doors have, um, <laughs> sprawling hinges on them, so, like, they can slam into people, you know, and knock them into, across the room and stuff. That's pretty awesome. Um, I don't know, I'll think more about this, but that's a good start. But these are some elite, annoying, you know, like, you, you know, mixed race, you know, primo teenagers. So then, like, the lights, you know, they have cool shades, so they all flip them down, so then that doesn't bother them anymore. And then, like, the doors, they spring off of them and, like, land back in the crowd of them, and they're like, cool haunted party mansion! Because, you know, they're already getting high. So then, like, um... The, the secret, though, is that's all just a disguise for the fact that they've bred super hot dragon's breath peppers, you know, that look all extra scorching, like they're like flames stilled in mid-motion with like, you know, secret techniques, you know, you know, carried out in laboratories on them to make them extra fiery hot. So then that's like mixed into some like tasty looking like, salsa dip with like guacamole and stuff that's like sitting on the counter so then all of the uh people you know that have invaded the house they all start eating all of the <laughs> super hot food and then they all start like screaming and like running around and then like the water's turned off yeah the water's all switched off it's like they go to get water it instantly turns off 
and then like they go towards the fridge and it like shoots ice cubes out at them and it's like pelting them with ice cubes and then they're all like you know falling on the floor and like slipping on them and like sucking on ice cubes you know as like um like the auto smell cannons in the house like to like provide refreshing scents like start putting out like you know like deadly panic gas that he's like developed so then like they don't care but then like they start panicking worse and worse you know and their mouths are on fire and they're all like finally you know they're like this party mansion's too extreme for us, bro. And they all take off, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, they, they, uh, they couldn't handle the scandal. That's the point. Like, they keep partying harder. Like, they, like, go upstairs and, like, the bed. Like, they're, like, fucking all over on all the beds upstairs. And then, like, the mattresses have, like, springs in them. And they're, like flinging them out, like, onto the balcony, you know, and, like, fall off uh, down onto the pool below, but they're just, like, relentless, you know, so, like, you know, finally, like, um, the final straw happens where, like, um, he brings out, like, the little robots with, like, the zappy prongs, with, like, the, you know... <laughs> extreme electricity, you know what I'm saying? With, like, different colors of electricity, like, experimental, like, zap points and stuff. So then he's, it's, like, going around, like, zapping people on the ass, you know, as they, like, finally run for it, because, you know, it's, t it's, it's too spicy, hot of fire. <laughs> it finally accumulates too much, you know, and they flee. It's just... <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. I, that sounds like a good BDSM session. That's kind of the joke of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, you know, a giant... The, the um, There's, like, a chandelier. that The chandeliers have, like, sense, sexy, like, sensey candles with, like, exotic scents that, like, automatically, like, are trimmed by, like, you know, little robot things that snip it. And then, like, new candles, like, the whole thing comes down, new candles are put down. So then, like, there's a whole bunch of wax, you know, that builds up. So then all the uh, chandeliers pour wax down all over, you know, the people that are partying, you know what I'm saying? So it's like a full BDSM session for no reason. Alright, Taylor Lautner, he has to choose, you know, sexy people that make sense along with other people, it's not just him, but he just, you know, I know people in the area, you know. But, like, they gotta be real sexy, you know. We've met him already, and he has a high sexuality standard. So, like, they gotta be in real good shape and not gross in any way. So, like, you know, we gotta have some quality, you know, people that are pretending to be teenagers. I don't care if they're 13 or, you know, 23, you know, just... It can be silly, they can be too muscular, it's a stupid movie, you know, where everyone's an asshole for no reason. <laughs> I just like it that way. So, like, these dolphins, they're, like, fucking, like, hardcore, and they, like, you know, are, like, been giving them alcohol and, like, like, fucking boner pills and stuff, and they, all the dolphins are coming all over them, and they, like, gave them tattoos and shit. These are, like, some nasty-ass dolphins that they yeah. brought with them. And they're, like, coming up their bay. They're, like, splooging up their bay, you know? Yeah, these are, like, invasive dolphins. So they have to, like, come in with, like, little submarines, you know, like, you know, that, like, periscope and, like, put out, like, sonar. This is all elitist Chinese technology, of course, right? Uh, all available on Amazon. And then you can sonar scan down in the area and it, like, say, checks out where the dolphins are on, like, a fancy map, you know? So then, like, they're, like, dropping, like, laced, you know, fish with, like, different things that the dolphins are snatching out of the air from the drones that, like, make the dolphins go nuts, you know? So then right when they're in the middle of, like, you know, fucking the teenagers, then the dolphins, like start, like, you know, foaming at the mouth and, like, you know, biting everyone, you know, and going, like, real savage in the bedroom, you know? <laughs>
But then, you know, Taylor Lautner, with his Native American senses, he figures out, you know, with his party master skills, you know, in binoculars, that, like, they're, they're uh-huh. doping the dolphins. So then he encourages them to invade the mansions fully to get a hold of the high-end stuff in there, you know, greenhouses in there that'll really fuck them up, you know, because those dolphins raped them real good, you know. So it's just encouraging them. They don't understand, you know. That when you play pranks on, like, the most ridiculously in shape people, you gotta do it right or they'll enjoy it. That's all. Yeah. I... So then, uh, Vin Diesel shows up in, um, the movie, uh, Two Tickets to Paradise. And he's, like, you know, dressed like, you know, like a Canadian lumberjack Mountie. And then, um... Wolf Boy, uh, from Twilight, he's like, go back to Canada, you know, old man, and then he, like, you know, rips off his lumberjack sh- Mountie shirt, and then he's, like, wearing, like, a U.S. Forest Ranger shirt underneath of it, and he's all, like, says some terrible line, like, um, this is the last time you, you, uh, disturb these good, uh, these, I don't even know. Who gives a crap? The point is, I can't think of one-liners in the moment, but the point is, like, he just says you're out of your jurisdiction, old man, because it's a terrible line. It's a terrible movie series. That is the line. And then he rips his shirt off, and then he says, you know, America is my jurisdiction. There we go. There, I did it. Vin Diesel says that. Then, you know... They're speedboats. They fly towards each other. <laughs> and then smash into each other nose first and fly in midair and collide, you know, and smash into each other, you know. And then they just fall into the water and then, you know, they're just terribly injured. And and that's, you know, that's the supposed action scene, you know. You don't, you don't speedboat joust. It's a bad idea. It's a great scene, though. <laughs> 